getting a diagnosis was absolutely heartbreaking. It was like t someone had taken the sound away from the world and taken all of the air as well. Deep down, I always knew what the doctor was going to say to us, but when he said it, it was just hearing it just brought it all back to reality. So I think I still remember that day she called me. She kind of said, oh, I did find something was wrong. So James has like a rare chromosomal deletion. Um, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was just devastating. We, we found out that he has autism at 14 months, especially when they tell you there's just no hope and no cure for autism. That was difficult. When, you, when you're told your child has autism, you don't necessarily understand what that means and it can take you a couple of years to really get your head around it. So when we were at the local school special needs class, education wasn't tailored to James's needs. He had to be isolated in a space by himself. His expression then became pulling the teacher's hair, ripping everything off the wall in the classroom, um, stripping his clothes off. And I think it really affected me turning up to the school that I was kind of the parent with the really, really badly behaved child. Things actually deteriorated further when she was at kindy. Uh, she was placed in a support class in a mainstream setting. And by year two, she was only attending two hours a day and that was outside the classroom. I think in a world where things are just measured on the degree of success or how much is achieved, um, I think kids like ours can sometimes be left behind and seen of more, as more of a burden. When we started here, he had no language. Uh, he was not toilet trained and basically very basic skill set. He can now cook, he can prepare food, uh, he does a lot of household chores and all those steps are part of his independence. I've really seen Heidi progress with is his social skills and how he interacts within a smaller uh, cohort and Giant Steps has been able to initiate those types of classes. Giant Steps is crucial to Declan and my existence. When she came, her staff were amazing and provided her with immense support and eventually won her trust. The piece for me is that Giant Steps has really opened up a world that would have been just so limited um, and so restricted for him into a world that's got a lot of opportunities to engage and communicate. It's like oxygen. You can breathe a little bit easier. Uh, it's a school that gave us hope a school uh, that tells us that we're not alone. Walking out of here just thinking this is the place that Dre has to be and I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that he can spend his school life here. And just seeing your child sort of being happy, you know, Logie is so excited when he sees the school bus, you know, he hops on, sits in his little seat. Um, that's something I could say um, has not happened anywhere else. So I think one of the things Giant Steps promotes is really to have our children integrated into the community. My daughter's now 12, but when I found out I was expecting her, Giant Steps were the fourth bunch of people we told outside of our immediate family and um, Giant Steps actually built for Ronan a whole program about the baby that was going to be arriving in the household. Your biggest fear is what will happen when you're gone. I don't believe that Hamish will ever speak. But by the time he leaves Giant Steps he will be able to communicate his basic needs to the broader community and if we can achieve that then I can die a happy lady. <laughs> the increased rate of autism, it might just mean that one day it might affect um, someone you know and I just feel that if there are really good supportive services like Giant Steps, it just makes having the diagnosis um, less challenging for any family. When you are giving support to Giant Steps, you are in fact giving hope to every family who have challenges with a kid diagnosed with autism and their child hope for the future.